Welcome. Today I'm going to talk about the guilt of Main Street America as it relates to our current economic crisis. I will start with a question. You're not required to provide an answer to that question. Just think about it and see how it relates to the topic being discussed. What approach do you take when confronted with a problem or a challenge? Do you take the easy and unproductive route of finding somebody to blame for your misfortune or your predicament? Or do you try to find your responsibility in the current situation? I thought about this question as I was observing the evolution of the movement of Occupy Wall Street with its message in which Wall Street is blamed for our economic malaise. Yes, I agree with their message. Wall Street has done so many bad things that led to this crisis. They made so many bad decisions which could be attributed to which could be attributed this economic situation. Bernie Madoff could be a good example. And the story of Enron could also serve as an example. However, when I go back to that question that I started with, I realize that we as a country, we are deciding to take the wrong approach. We are avoiding taking responsibility in this crisis. Instead of assuming our responsibility, we are placing blame on Wall Street America. And that is not a productive approach. And the reason I say that is because Wall Street does not deal alone. Wall Street deal with us. You and I, we deal with Wall Street every single day of our lives. We buy their products and services. We are the ones who guarantee their success. And we are the one who determine their failure. It's your appetite, it's my appetite that determine where Wall Street goes. And so saying that Wall Street is responsible for this mess that we are in today, I think it's missing the mark. We are missing the mark because we are only believing in a half-truth. Saying that Wall Street is to blame, it is true, but it's not the whole truth. We are leaving out another aspect of this issue. And, it, and that is the unregulated appetite of Main Street America. The unregulated appetite of you and I. You and me. That is also a contributor to this crisis we are in today. I'm going to prove how we, the consumers in America, we have a share of responsibility in this current crisis. I'm going to prove that by giving some statistics. In 1982, Americans saved 12% of their income and household debt as a percentage of GDP was 63%. Wow! That's amazing. That's a good place. That's a country I would like to live in. But let's go back to four years ago. In 2007, American savings were below zero, while household debt as a percentage of GDP soared above 130%, a doubling in only 25 years. 
These numbers were taken from the article by James Quinn. The article is titled, The Shallowest Generation. If we, Main Street America, can consume at that rate, how can we blame Wall Street America for this mess? Doing that is an irresponsible approach. We are not assuming our responsibility. Let me give another statistic, another number. Between 1989 and 2007, credit card debt soared from $238 billion to $937 billion, a 300% increase between 1989 and 2007. How can we do that? And how can we justify that? We cannot continue to ignore this other issue of consumer unregulated appetite and think that we will get by. It doesn't work that way. Yes, Wall Street has done its share, but Main Street is not innocent. We are not innocent as we would like to think. We have done our share of responsibility. We have done our share in this issue. It is time that we wake up as a nation to deal with this issue, to find productive ways of dealing with this issue instead of blaming each other instead of blaming one another for this situation we are in today. It's not productive and it won't take us anywhere. So, what can we do? I have a few ideas. Things that we can do, we can start doing today and they will help us change this situation in a very short period of time. But we've got to be consistent in doing those things. Number one, I talked about how the consumer appetite is not regulated. That is where we need to start. We need to regulate the consumer's appetite. Our consumption, that's what I mean. Regulate our consumption. And when I say regulate our consumption, I do not mean passing laws dictating how much we are to consume or not to consume. That's not what I'm talking about. When I say regulating consumption, I mean educating the consumer so that when they make a decision, when they decide to consume, they have the right tool upon which they can base their decision. That is exactly what I am talking about. Number two, we need to cut our consumption. After we educate the consumer, we need to cut our consumption because we cannot continue to consume at this rate, our current rate, and think that we will be a prosperous society. It's not practical. It's not practical. We can't do that. We need to think about how we consume. Is this real? Is this sustainable? Can we sustain this current consumption? And if it's not, then we need to cut it and bring it down to a realistic rate of consumption. That is the second thing we need to do. Number three, I talked about how in 1982, Americans were saving 12% of their income. If we went back to that habit, I believe that we will be able to change the situation in this country. Save only 12% of our income. We will be able to pay our debts. We'll be able to invest. We'll be able to have uh, a lot of money that we can use for other things that we need instead of charging 
credit cards. And here is my proposition. And I am committed to do it. Actually, it is my New Year resolution for 2012. I came up with a plan that I called a 12-12 plan. And my 12-12 plan is a plan that focuses on fiscal responsibility. And fiscal responsibility starts at home. It starts in our families. If families are able to balance their budgets, it will be easy for the government to balance its budget. But if families are not able to balance their budgets, how do you expect the government to balance its budgets? That's not doable. And we cannot blame our government for failing to balance it, its budgets because even our homes, even in our homes, we are not able to do so. And so my 12-12 plan is about saving 12% of our income for 12 months and see how that will affect our economy. Those who have debt, put that money toward that debt. In that just one, that one year, you'll have paid a huge portion of your debt. Instead of increasing that debt, you will bring it down. And those who do not have debt, you will have saved 12% of your income. Now, if you compound the interest, and if you let that grow after that 12 months, imagine what that will be. Now, if we take that on the national level, if our government is able to cut spending by 12% and put that toward our national debt, imagine how long will it take us to be debt-free? How long will it take us? And how long will it take us to have a balanced budget in this country? It will be less in less than 12 years we will be a debt-free country. We will have a balanced budget. That's where we want to be. And we cannot be there if the consumer does not, is, is not educated. We cannot do that if we do not cut our consumption. We cannot do that if we do not save or we, if we do not pay our debts. It's, it's not possible. We can't do that. And number four, this is another thing we need. The government needs to do its job of creating a reasonable framework within which the market will operate. And when I say that, I mean that businesses cannot set all the rules that regulate the market. You can't do that. We need to have the government play its role, do its job of protecting the consumer. We need to have that in this country. And when we have those regulations, they have to be regulations that do not suffocate the business sector because we need those business people. These are the creative minds, the creative brains we have in our society. If we suffocate them, we may send them abroad. We may send them to other countries and other countries will benefit and we, we will lose. So we need to have, as I said, reasonable regulations that favor, that encourage creativity, that encourage innovation, but also regulations that protect the consumer. And who can protect the consumer? It is the government. It's the role of the government. And so we let the business do its job and we let the consumer do their job, but within a well-defined framework. That is what I propose in order to solve this issue.